Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, a quick video, I'm going to try to make it quick, on configuring your NetApp 10 gig interfaces uh, on your Cisco Nexus switches. So, as you can see here, we've got uh, C and D are, are the cluster network, and E and F are, our, are going to be our data interfaces for most of our traffic. So to start with, let's do the let's do the Nexus stuff first. Okay. So if you right, so if we look at our ports. So port 17 on both switches is the will be the interface for controller A on the NetApp and ports 18 on both switches will be controller B. So how this is going to work those were E and F. All right. It's E and F. All right. Yeah. So this is the A A zero B is going to be the um, the virtual interface we make out of the two bonded ten gig interfaces, and this is a little bit of um, to do. To, so the the VLAN part of this, I am going to trunk these ports, and then create VLANs on the VLAN tagging. For the NetApp side, so that you get communication over those ports. We're not going to just assign a, a, a VLAN to these like I did in the previous video with the one gig data interfaces. And uh, 
just for reference with this, if you if if you're trunking these ports and you only want specific VLANs to be allowed, you can you can run the switch port trunk allowed VLANs. And then you can just do like, you know, comma delimited whatever, you know, whatever VLANs you want to be allowed on it. And unlike uh, unlike normal switches, like if what I prefer to do is do all the config at the port channel level because it passes that stuff on down to the interface level. So if you you configure your port channel and then you do your switch port trunk or you know allowed VLANs whatever um, <clears throat> or switch port access VLAN, uh, it automatically propagates that down to the member ports in the channel group. And you don't have to do the, the switch port encapsulation stuff on Nexus that you do on Catalysts. channels they're they should be down because we don't have uh, we don't have this configured on the NetApp side yet but we'll do that now so the first thing I need to do is <clears throat> make sure that no interfaces belong to E0E or E0F and they don't everything is home and none of them are E0E or F so from here we need to remove those ports from the broadcast domain because they're they're not going to be members of a broadcast domain the the combined port gets it gets added to the broadcast domain Face group A zero B
So now the ports have been added to the interface group. And we can see our port channels are up. Our VPCs are up. Okay, so at this point, you're ready to uh, to create your VLANs on the NetApp side to communicate with uh, with everything. So we need a zero B nineteen. So we're only going to do the the one here for this video because um, I need to do more setup for the other VLANs. Like the the DR stuff is going to going to route between itself like this the switches are already set up for routing but not um not outside it didn't add a default route through uh through the network or anything yeah, i don't know if i'm going to do that until it's in the data center and uh i can configure it but um so let's look at so you can use you can use 121 all right. Now, the ports to the broadcast domain. Now, so you look, and we've got that NFS 10 gig port, and we can move that. We can move that port. one ping and now you can see it's on a zero B so both of our ports are up and functioning that just puts everything back to where it belongs and uh, that's uh, that's pretty much it that's how you configure LACP port channels uh, between your NetApp controllers and your Cisco Nexus switches thanks for watching